awesome mood music. Awesome, thank you. What's up, Hill Country Church? How you guys doing this morning? All right. Cool. Well, so I just want to let you guys know that you are so welcome here. It's so good to be here with you guys. And what God is putting forth for us today is an invitation. It's an invitation into love. And directly attached to that invitation this morning is God's friendship. God is the greatest friend that we can ever have. So on top of the invitation, I want to read you guys a verse from John 15. It says, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. So guys, with that in mind and with the invitation that the Lord's putting forth, I want everyone to close your eyes for me. And what we're going to do is we're going to take five seconds. And if you want to, I want you to accept the Lord's invitation. Okay? Starting now. If you want to, just say yes. Just accept it and everything's going to change. All right. All right. That was five seconds. So guys, with that what we're going to do now, I hope that your world just changed like mine did when he showed me that last night. But now we're going to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And we're going to give thanks to him and praise his name. So let's get loud. Let's do it. sound of the Savior's robe as he walked into the room where people pray, where we hear praises he hears faith. Oh, yeah. Are you ready to give him your praise today? There is a sound I love to hear. Sound of the Savior's robe as he walked into the room where people pray, where we hear worship, he hears faith. Let his praise rise. 
his praise of all. Oh, 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 wake my soul and sing, sing his praise of all. Sing his praise of love. Are you awake this morning? Oh, shake off anything else. It's time to worship him. That changes it. It's the sound of his people on their knees. Awake up, you sovereign. It's time to worship him. Oh, hey, my soul and sing. Sing his praise aloud. Sing his praise. your holy
worship night on Wednesday. So I don't know if it's a little too early this morning or what's going on, but I know, it's almost 11, y'all. Can we just praise him for a few minutes longer? Just give him all you got. Here's what I want to do. Praise is because passion is seen. Can you show some praise this morning? Passion is seen, passion is seen. Oh God, we're so in love with you, Jesus. treasure I find, my reason for living, so let my life become an offering to the one who is worthy. And all praise to the Lord most high, all praise to the one who saved my life. All praise 
singing. I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down, my whole life down before you. I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down, my whole life down before you. He's here. He's stirring. So we were worshiping there. The Lord gave me a, a picture of the cross and reminded me that when he was up there crucified and dying, that there were only a handful of them, but some of them still surrendered right there at the cross when all hope seemed to be gone. That some wept at the foot of the cross saying, I still believe in who you are. I still know it. As we were singing those lyrics, it doesn't miss anything. It says, I lay my whole life down, everything. And I feel like there's a, to be a response from us today. If there's an area where you feel like you've lost hope, where it feels like it's broken, there's an invitation this morning to not just lay down the pieces that are easy to lay down, but lay down something hard. To surrender an area of your life that it's been difficult. So I'd, I'd like to sing it just one more time. And if you're in here this morning, and you need to surrender something that it's been difficult, I'm going to invite you to just whatever a prophetic act it looks like, if it's coming up to the altar and getting on your knees, if it's laying down right where you are, if it's standing up as tall as you can with your arms as high as you can, but just sing this out and think of that area and just say, I'm, I'm handing it over. I'm giving my ashes for your beauty today, Lord. I'm not losing hope. I'm surrendering to you take this opportunity. I lift my hands up and lay my whole life down, my whole life down for you. I lift my hands up and lay my whole life down, my whole life down for you. I lift my hands up and lay my whole life down, my whole life down before you, I lift my hands up and lay my whole life down, my whole life down before you.
Yeah, it's in the room. There's freedom in the room. I feel like now this is, this is part two. This is the completion of it. Galatians 5.1 said, It's for freedom's sake that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then. Do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. If you receive freedom in the house today, I just say lift your hands up. And will you just cry it out with me? Freedom! So, we're not going to be burdened again. I'm not living under a yoke of slavery, and neither are you. We're set free in you, Jesus. Shoot. change my whole perspective I'm ready to see you see you rightly just as you are just as you are to see you in all your glory just as you are, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, so beautiful. completely captivated you have my heart nothing hidden nothing wasted I'm ready to see Just as you are, just as you are, to see you in all your glory, just as
So beautiful to all. 
Your song rise, let your song rise. Oh, don't get tired now. Oh, huh. drink your fill of the Lord. Oh, get plugged right into it. going a little long, just hang in there. Don't want to miss this moment. We drink deep. The Lord's been ministering so deeply in the room during worship today. But I feel so strongly that right now is just, I can feel it. Heaven is inviting us into their worship. And we've already been pouring out for almost an hour now. But let's go a little bit longer. Come on. Let's join in with the invitation. Can I invite you just to stand up again? Can I invite you to lift up your hands again? I just want to continue what Timothy was saying there. If you've been in there this whole time, like, uh, I don't know. I just, I don't feel like entering or in, or this is different for me. I, this is the Lord giving one last invitation while we worship, while the music's going. That today's your day. This is your moment of breakthrough and freedom to stand up and, and receive what it's like to be in his presence. That freedom of joy to receive a spirit of praise instead of heaviness. I just say, shake off the dust and arise.
my whole life down before you. And with my hands up, lay my whole life down, my whole life down before you. Come on, lift them up. I lift my hands up. Sing it loud. Jesus, we love your presence. There's no place I'd rather be than in your court singing your praise, God. Jesus, whoa. Jesus. Sorry, guys, sometimes Holy Spirit puts pressure on me, and I've, I, I'm like, I don't want to say it, but he won't leave me alone. I know. Well, we used to say this one in youth group, if this, if this one shakes you, let it shake you out of a bad place into a freedom place, but there's no high like the most high. <laughs> Come on. Woo. Jesus. Jesus. Cool. Tim, if you're watching online, I love you, bud. Cool. Just so in case anybody edits it, Jesus good, weed bad, okay? Um, <laughs> Jesus. Whew. This is a... Mm. Yeah, I just feel hunger in the room. So that's just, God's releasing revelation. Anna, you're on deck, by the way. Um, I heard a, a pastor, it was actually at Antioch Church in Waco, 
he said this. It, it totally rocked me. He said, the reason people, humanity, your flesh is drawn to sex and violence is because God made us for love and war. The reason people are drawn to drugs is because you're, you're meant to feel this elation in his presence. It's the, there's a poor man's, a fleshly way to do it, and there's a kingdom way to do it. That's what we're tapping into, is the kingdom way to pursue this. We're not crazy. We're just following his Holy Spirit. And trust me, the Bible's got crazier stuff than this even right here. Yeah. And they, whoo, there it is. Okay, I knew he was going to have me share this. Um, the kids were getting it before us. There was a moment where it was quiet where I heard Canaan just say, yay. And she was breaking through. And I saw these little ladies here dancing in joy in the presence. And then little man, he was up here with his dad a minute ago. And little man up here, I think Carmen and I were the only ones to hear it. But he goes, this is the best day ever of my life. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, we have to be good. I know Tim's, Timothy's going to bring an amazing word today. Yeah, come on. Timothy's going to share with us today. Um, and we don't always do this one, but I do this in chapel. I, I just feel the moment to pause in it. Um, I, I think, what, 25% of our songs today were on the list, um, maybe. Oh, we did all right, yeah, but they improvised really well. Can we just thank our band for being amazing? Actually, it wasn't improvised. They followed the Holy Spirit, but you get what I mean. Um, if I'm a lot for you, then I'm going to bring Anna up here to share because um, if I'm bombastic, then she's just going to minister because I, I, I believe she's got something for those of us just feeling something sensitive in our spirit today. I'm not sure quite how to follow that, but um, I just in worship, I saw uh, Jesus as the Lion of Judah like roar over us and there was this place where we surrendered we lay our, ourselves down before him and that's a really uh, vulnerable place it's a place even as we entered into intimacy with him that you're exposed and this when he roars over us lions roar to defend their territory to stake their claim to say this is my pride these are my people and you can't touch them and the roar goes out far like miles and miles and so I want you to know that as you lay yourself down as you lay things before him he is good and he is fierily protective over you he is roaring over you you are not exposed there's not a place that you have to self-protect. He does it for you. He's your safe fortress. He's your strong tower. You get to go into him under the shadow of his wings and you are safe, which allows you to go deeper into the place of surrender. So I just want to encourage you that he's got you and you get to go deeper into him. And what has started here continues after here so I would that would be my encouragement take it with you and say roar over me show me your safety this is this is going to be really hard to do right now Listen, if you've ever wondered how David, the king, could strip down to his underwear and dance in front of the whole country, you got a little idea of how that happens. This is amazing. And I just, I have to reiterate one more time. This is what we're made for. This is, this is what it's all about. There seems to be so much peripheral that we get caught up in. It's about being in his presence and letting his presence change us. Not for a couple hours, but forever. One of my favorite um, stories about Abraham is when the, uh, he went out to fight uh, the king of Elam. He went out to retrieve all the things that the king of Elam and some other kings had taken 
from Sodom and Gomorrah and uh, basically his nephew, Lot, and bring them back. And as he's on his way back from victory, he sees Melchizedek. And he comes across this timeless, mysterious um, uh, 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 figure of Christ in the Old Testament. And he pays his, his 10%. And just right after that, the king of Sodom comes along and says, um, here, you can have all the plunder. And Abraham, just after giving 10% to Melchizedek, looks at the king of, of Sodom and says, no, no, I don't want any of it. I'm not going to have anybody say that you blessed me. It's God who I'm looking to. It's God. So he, he then, the very next scene, the next chapter, and this, this is the one that really, really tugs at my heart. He's sitting there because he's been promised a son. He has all this wealth, and, and he wants an heir. And he's sitting there, and he's sad. And it's almost like God comes up alongside him. Not almost. God does come alongside him and say, don't worry. Uh, Abraham, I'm your shield. And that actually translates to, I'm your sovereign. And he says after that, I'm your reward. I'm your reward. And he's like, well, what, what really do I need of any wealth or anything like that? He goes, come here. I can almost sense God put his arm around Abraham and walk him out of the tent. He says, Abraham, look up. Look up. See the stars? That's your offspring right there. Now, Psalm 16 this really speaks to me in light of, of that story. Psalm 16, 5. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. And this is the one that gets me every time. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have the delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. Nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. With eternal pleasures at your right hand. God is saying, you don't have to worry about anything. Be in my presence. Submit to me. I've got your back. Just like he said to Abraham, i got your back. Don't worry. I've not forgotten about you. The more we can get our minds off of how am I financially going to make it and just say, God, I'm going to love you, serve you and walk in obedience to you. And he's saying, I got your back. Let's pray real quick. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that there's so much that we don't need to worry about, that we don't need to fret about or be anxious about. You have set us free from that. We just come into your presence and we enjoy you. And you've got our back. I thank you for that, Lord God. Bless these offerings, Lord, and use them for your kingdom. In Jesus' holy name, amen. There's boxes in the back and uh, hug a neck. We are called to be like our Father, who overflows in generosity. He's invited us to be cheerful givers so we can live in His blessings and abound in all things. Let's partner with heaven today and joyfully give our tithes and offerings. Here's a quick link to visit the giving page on our website, providing you with multiple ways to give. There are also offering boxes with envelopes to drop your cash and checks in the back of the sanctuary. May you be blessed as you give, believing that God is faithful to supply all your needs.
alone. There we go. Hi. Good morning, Hill Country Church. How are we doing this morning? Come on, the college group's awake, the rest of you. Okay, one lady had coffee. Um, okay, <laughs> there we go. If you have not dismissed your kids over to Children's Church, you can do so right out that door. Children zero all the way to sixth grade. All right, we ready for some more fun this morning? There we go. Okay, fantastic. I got an interesting email the other day, though, I got to tell you guys about. It was said, we're going to teach you how to read maps backwards. Turns out it was just spam. Think about it. Think about it. See, it's maps backwards. That's, it's, it's educational, yes. Uh, there you go. Okay, some quick announcements. We've already announced this one, but just reminding, this Wednesday is Nerf and Nachos for the kids. 6.30 in the cafeteria and the gym. Just a family fun night to fellowship, play with your kids, and maybe take out a little aggression on them. Um, so just blasting them with a Nerf gun. <laughs> what? Um, it's fun. Boo, hiss. That's my wife. Um, so... <laughs> Okay, um, and then the college group, where, where's the college group? There we go. We're, they're having their retreat, um, and it's, by the way, you don't have to go to college to be part of the group. It's college age, um, and so it's the Texas State U Camp, and that is going to run September 22nd through the 24th. Registration is already available on our website. If you need help, though, Kathleen is right there. She can help you. The deadline to register is the 20th, but why wait? Sign up today, am I right? So uh, sign up today. Okay. Um, and we're going to, uh, next week, we're going to announce a lot about connection groups. Um, so please, if you're interested, uh, be paying attention next week. If you're not here, watch online. We're going to announce a lot of stuff about it because it's the fall, so it's the season for it. But we've got some really cool family business to cover this morning, so I'm going to invite Elizabeth up. All right, perfect. We have two mics, but whatever. Do you want to stand with me? That's awesome. This is my grandbaby. Yes, precious. Came in. All right. <laughs> uh, wow, what a morning. I just have to say that. You know, those of you who came on Wednesday night, you really sowed in to that well of worship. I think we were reaping from that today, so <laughs> it's actually in our heart to do it a little bit more, so um, we hope to do that. But I have a very special announcement. So for Sean and Devia, would you come up here, please? <laughs> Devia just arrived from a very far away land. These two got married. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, so we just wanted to, as a family, just say congratulations. They're going to fly over to uh, Dubai in October and have a fancy wedding, but um, yeah, we can't wait to see the pictures. I, I'm just planning to show one, just so you know, because we all need to experience that. But um, we wanted to say congratulations and welcome. Please make Divya feel welcome. Uh, she has now moved here to the U.S., and so that's a really big, big change. <laughs> yeah, we love you guys. Congratulations. really special. Well, uh, how many of you are ready for a really awesome testimony? Yeah. Tom, would you come up? Yeah. Um, I don't know how many of you know, but we've got a, on the weekends, <laughs> on the weekends, um, there's outreach happening on the square just about every week. And um, some really, really, oh yeah, that's awesome. And so uh, we asked him to share a really cool testimony that happened last week. So. Okay. All right. It was a couple of Saturday nights ago, and uh, I, I actually did something different. I came in here and was just praying, walking circles in the dark. And uh, it was a good prayer time, but towards the end of the prayer time, it really got pretty special. And I, I, in my mind's eye, I actually, and I don't know why this came to me, but I, 
I saw the, the metaphor you guys have heard so many times, but the Jordan River flows into the Sea of Galilee, and then that flows down into the Dead Sea. And so I started to pray for flow. And I started to pray, oh, God, let the church as a whole plus us as individuals experience flow. Because life, um, the Sea of Galilee is full of life, but the Dead Sea is kind of dead because nothing goes through it and out. You understand that part? And so I'm just praying that, and I'm praying for flow, and it was really very special. And then I heard the Holy Spirit just in an inviting way, but not a rebuke. I heard him just say, well, you know, they're meeting on the square in about 10 or 15 minutes. I went, okay, Lord, I got it. And so I, I just let, I, I was going to pray for a while. So I just left and headed for the square. Well, we, we usually meet at this one corner, and there's a couple of park benches on that corner, and we sat on those benches, and we talk for a while, and then we pray, and then, uh, and then we go. But anyway, we were sitting on those benches, and we started prayer, and I just kept looking up. I just couldn't stop looking up at this third-floor bar up it's on the top of, I don't know if it's called Harper's or whatever, but I just noticed... Um, that the, these people were sitting at the right side of the rail there. And so we just continued to pray, but my attention was on them, and I, my tent, I just couldn't get my mind off of them. And so after, after we were done praying, we're getting ready to go, and um, I just said to everybody, would you guys mind if we just went up <laughs> to that bar up there? And they said, sure, let's go. So we go into the bars every now and then, but anyway... Uh, but what I'm saying is, is we went around the alley and up all those stairs up uh, up to that third floor and walked out there. And, you know, it's a little bit difficult to just walk up to somebody, but I'm getting good at it. Yeah. And so we just walked over there to these people. And there was I got myself in trouble for saying this in staff meeting the other day. <laughs> but there was. The average age of people out at that time of night on a Saturday night is not old, okay? But there, <laughs> but there was an older couple there, and across the table from them was, well, just one, one young lady, younger. And so we just, I, you know, just said, hey, we were just sitting down at those benches praying, and we come go out on Saturday night and just try to speak blessings over people and talk to people and they're looking at me kind of strange, and then I just said, well, would you mind if we just prayed some blessings over y'all? And they, they just said, sure. And so uh, anyway, we just started praying for the one couple, the, the older couple. And uh, uh, as we were praying for them, another guy showed up. And he had been in the restroom, and he, I don't know if he was married to this girl or not. I have no idea, but anyway... So we finished praying for the older ones, and then Carrie just looks at this guy, Carrie Martin. She looks at the guy, and she says, I have a word for you. And he had just walked up. Now, that's kind of wild. You're standing there, and somebody meets you in a bar and says, I have a word for you. Anyway, okay, so God's talking. But so Carrie just starts prophesying over that guy, and it just, it's, it was powerful. It was strong. And the girl who was with him on that side of the table, she starts weeping. And then when Carrie's done prophesying over, over him, she just looks at me and said, now, why did you come talk to us? And I said, well, we were sitting down there, and I pointed down at the park benches on the sidewalk, and I said, we were sitting down there, and I felt like we were just supposed to come talk to y'all. It was like, and so she goes, well... She said, for the first time in my life, I prayed last week and asked God if he was real. Would he send somebody to us? And so, so anyway, the younger couple was going to go to church with the older couple. So we just blessed them and had a, just a tremendous time with them. And it was really special. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's pray. But listen, do you guys realize that we can get stagnant if we're not given? Come on. Do you realize that we can be like that Dead Sea? Let's pray. So, Lord, I just pray.
that we will follow those those gentle, even kind of nudgings. I don't know what else to call them. Those little things, those little thoughts in our hearts, in our minds that says, we ought to do this, we ought to go there, or we ought to um, touch base with so-and-so. And Lord, and whenever we're out, I pray that we would just obey the promptings. And Lord, I pray that we would be like the Sea of Galilee, that the, the clean, fresh River Jordan flows in, but then also that river flows out. And I pray that, that we would be a fresh people. And I pray that over your church as a whole, God. May we be fresh people because we take in you and give out to others. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. Amen. morning. What's up? <laughs> wow. Um, I just want to remind everyone that we pray, we've been, we've been praying ever since we, we heard the stories about Jesus showing up to Muslims and dreams. We've been praying for divine appointments. That's a divine appointment. And each of us has access to that. Can do it again. He's just looking for willingness. All he asked was for Tom's yes. Come on, guys. It's awesome. All righty. Well, I'm very excited and grateful to be up here. This is my first time to have a Sunday morning preach uh, the whole thing all to myself. <laughs> Yeah, um, so I'm just, I'm honored to be up here because I have people that have known me uh, since we first came here when I was very young, uh, I have people that, you know, all through the journey, and so I'm just grateful to be up here, and I just want to say thank you all for your trust, I'm honored to be up here. Um, so I have a super high value for the word of the house. And I believe that um, dad has been sharing the word of the house, and that's being a fruit of a disciple. What's, it, what's the fruit of being a disciple? Um, and so today I'm actually going to continue in that vein. And if you guys know me at all, you guys probably know that, oh, he's gonna, <laughs> he wants to talk about outreach. He wants to talk about salvation. He wants to talk about evangelism. Because when you, I hear fruit, actually, just when I get up here at all, you squeeze me a little. I'm going to talk about leading people to Christ. Um, <laughs> and I was talking to the Lord, and I was like, oh, here we go. And the Lord said, hold up, son. Hold up, hold up. He was like, there's other fruit. I was like, I know, Dad. And he was like. I want you to share another fruit. And I said, okay. And he said, what? And we started having a dialogue. We started having a conversation. And um, the week before, Canaan had got super, super sick. Um, and it was a late night and had a lot to do the next day. And it was on our day off. And I knew that it was going to kind of wreck our, our, the next day because we didn't really have any rest. And then we were up all night and all these things. And... The Lord reminded me, he's like, hey, remember when you just said help? I was like, yeah. He's like, that's a fruit of being a disciple. We, we oftentimes forget that we have, we have access to things that other people don't have access to. See, everyone can cry out for help, just like that lady that said that, the week before Tom and them talked, said, God, if you're real, send someone. That was a cry for help. That was a, she was reaching out and she was like, are you there? Are you real? And he responded because the Lord always wants to reveal himself. But there's different kinds of help and there's different access of levels of help, Right? We've all experienced different kinds of help. And so today I want to talk to you about three different kinds of help. Um, but my launching point, I'm, we're actually, let's all turn to John 14. Yeah. 
if you don't believe me, that we have help. This verse kind of clears that. <laughs> kind of settles that. This is verses 15 and 16. If you love me, Dad has done a great job of talking about being a disciple and what it means. But this right here, this is what it means to be a disciple. If you love me, if you love Jesus, you're his disciple. I just want to make it really, really clear and simple. Remind everyone, if you love Jesus, you're his disciple, okay? That's no one is excluded from this. No one is excluded from being a disciple. If you love me, you will keep my commands. That's not and keep my commands. If you love me, you will. So that's all just set up for this. This is Jesus talking. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. In the ESV that says a helper. See, as disciples, we have access to something that most people don't have. We have the Holy Spirit who's inside of us. Not just, he, does, he didn't just come in and just touch us and say, oh, good to meet you, adios. Nope, we are the tabernacle. We host and carry the presence of God. Who is the presence of God? The Holy Spirit, because it's the Spirit of the Lord, right? So His Holy Spirit dwells within us. So we have a helper inside of us who is meant to be there alongside of us. And he's meant for you to talk to him. Let's pray real quick. Holy Spirit, we know you're in here. We're so grateful that you came. We're grateful for what you did during worship. Lord, I ask that you could continue what you've been doing all morning. Lord, if anyone in this room needs to hear what you need to say and not the words coming out of my mouth, I ask that you would take over. Take over their ears. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty. I'm super excited. Um, this has been stirring in me all week, and so I just, it's fun. Um, so... Let's go back to John 14, 16. And I will give, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. Each and every one of us has access to help. But what are some of the different kinds of help? There's a lot of different ones, but I want to talk about three. Today I want to talk about emotional distress. All of us have been that way before, right? Get, I need some interaction. If you've been emotionally distressed before, would you raise your hand? If you've been overwhelmed, if you've not known what to do, if you've been stressed, raise your hand because that is what emotional distress is. I want to talk about how he helps us when we get into messes. How many of you have made a mess? I'll be the first to raise my hand. I've made a mess. I said help. But the last one and where we're going to rest today is actually a different kind of help. It's not like emergency. We're not throwing up the emergency. Help us, Jesus, and going into emergency tongues and crying out like, Lord, help us. No, no, no. It's a different kind of help. It's the help that is the unfair advantage that we've been using that phrase. It is the help that when God asks you to do something and you don't know what to do, the help piece is then he, you get to ask him, what do I do? It's actually his help to transform you. When he says be transformed by the renewing of your mind, he's not asking you to do it yourself. Right? So we're going to land there. So before we get there, though, I wanted, this morning God woke me up and was like, we have to change some things. And I was like, oh, God. Because I know what that means. That usually means we're about to change the whole message and we're going to go a different route. And I'm going to write everything on a post-it note. And that's going to be really messy. And I'm going to be a little nervous, but God's going to take care of it. But it wasn't that. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> uh, it wasn't that. No, he was like, hey, I want to add something. And I was like, okay. He said, I want you to show everyone that I've always been the helper. I've never not been the helper. Yeah. 
even when our ancestors made a mistake, the greatest mistake that let sin enter the world and then help looked a little different in the Old Testament, even there, even there, he was our helper. And so I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but he wanted me to show. And so I'm actually just going to quote the verse where he said that he, he saw that man was alone and he said he needs a suitable helper. It's been from the beginning, guys, that he's wanted us to have a helper. And he wasn't just giving, it wasn't just the idea of just the man gets help. Like, no, actually, the, we're going to go somewhere in just a second that's going to show you that help actually is not talking about, like, doing the little chores around the house. It's actually the power source to make things happen. And so I'm going to show you that in Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. The Beatitudes. And I said, God, how are you going to show us about, how, what are, how are we going to talk about help through this? And he was like, he had me read the Beatitudes a couple times. I just want to make sure these are the Beatitudes. Is that what that's called, right? I, yeah, just making sure. Thank God. <laughs> I, I've, heard, I've heard lots of preaching on this, you know, and so when you just kind of get used to that, you're like, I hope that's actually right. You know, it's like your brain just tries to, anyway, anyways. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are, those who's mo- blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek. Hold on, that's a little different. Right? The first two are kind of negative things. Poor in spirit means, let's actually look at the Greek there. What, is, what does poor mean? Reduced to beggary, begging, destitute of wealth, influence, position, and honor. Lowly afflicted, destitute of Christian virtues and eternal riches. You're destitute, you're empty of Christian virtues. Helpless. I was like, whoa. Lord, I've heard lots and lots of preaching that we're meant to be poor in spirit because we want the kingdom of heaven. And he's like, dude, how are you going to do the rest of those if you are poor in spirit. That means you're literally empty of all the others. Because the rest are, be humble. Hunger and thirst for righteousness. Be merciful. Be pure of heart. Be peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted. Okay, hold on. If if we're meant to be poor in spirit, how can we do the rest of those? Because it literally means to be empty of Christian virtue. God wasn't saying, hey, be Be poor in spirit and then do all this. He was saying, hey, if you're poor in spirit, don't worry. Because I'm your help. He wanted to show us that the list of the Beatitudes wasn't just for the people that aren't, that don't have it, that don't know what to do. Because all of us are called to be transformed. All of us have been, been, we've been given commands, right? Right? We all know the moments where God says, hey, don't do that. Or we're reading in the word and it challenges you and you're like, ooh, I don't know. You know, it's like we've all had those moments, right? And sometimes we just try and sweep them under the rug. Other times we try and in our own strength just toil with them. But I want to tell you that he was from the very beginning, with the he had the idea of everyone getting help. Because right here he says, if you have nothing, you're going to inherit my kingdom. He's not saying have nothing so you can inherit the kingdom. He's saying you have access. If you love me, you will keep my commands. And if you love me, I will give you a counselor. I will send you a helper forever. Okay? It's been from the beginning, guys been from the beginning. This is who he is. This is who he wants us to be. He wants us to be full of virtue. And he's not asking us to do it alone. He's not asking us to figure it out on our own. Okay? So let's jump in. Let's go back a little. Let's rewind the clock. Let's go into emotional distress. How many of you guys have been there? You've been overwhelmed. You've been in a place where you're stressed. 
you feel like you, you had lost, you lost something, you're running late for a meeting, whatever it is. In those moments where I, I consider emotional stress not to be like the most extreme emotional thing, it can be emotional duress or it can be dust stress or it can be a little bit of stress. When you're emotional, sometimes it's hard to hear God when you're in that place, right? If you have a hard time hearing God, that's what emotional distress is. Because we were never, like, we've, because everything has become accessible through technology, we, we've become, we think we're, we think we're therapists, every single one of us. And so we're like, oh, I just need to work on my self-help and I need to work on my emotions, my mental state isn't good. That, yeah, all that's great. But guess what? We have a helper that actually can get, give you the solution to the issue instead of putting a freaking Band-Aid on it and just trying to. <laughs> Figure it out yourself, and uh, oh, this is a this is a this is a pet peeve for me. <laughs> because the church has handicapped itself and has tried to figure out what's wrong with me. How do I fix me without asking God? We've literally we've taken the greatest resource, the answer to all, the one who knows everything, who knows you better than yourself, who knows exactly what you need, and we said, I got this, God. <laughs> so high and mighty. I'll take care of this myself, Lord. But then when we get in emotional distress, we're like, God, help me! Let's turn to John 11. You guys want to see some emotional distress? Mary and Martha just had their brother die Suddenly. I want to show you that help looks different ways. See, he, he doesn't just have a blanket cover for help. He meets you right where you're at with exactly what you need to give you help. On, this is 17. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been dead in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in their loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed home. She couldn't do it. She was disappointed. She was like, why was Jesus not here? I know if he'd been here, you could have healed him. They'd seen so many miracles. They had faith. Even Martha said, Lord, which the Greek actually means Messiah. She said, Messiah, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even her emotional distress, she had faith. She said, but I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. So he, she's like, if you ask him, he'll come back. I know. And Jesus said, instantly comfort her. He said, your brother will rise. He said, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection life. <laughs> who, he who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. He comforted her with words. But let's roll back just a little bit. Where Jesus didn't just bring revelation knowledge. He didn't just bring good theology. Where does it say? No, it's further up. This is 35. Jesus wept. He's asked them, where have you laid him? Come and see, Lord, they replied. And Jesus wept. He wanted to bring not just help. See, he knew what Martha needed, but he knew what other people needed. He was like, they just need me to be who I am and just be here. Jesus knew this man. He was already feeling things. It wasn't hard. He didn't have to make it up. He wept. He cried. In your emotional distress. Oh, wow. I'm, oh, I need to speed up. Oh, Lord. <laughs> 
<laughs> in your emotional distress, in your emotional distress, you, we've all been there before. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And we've all been in this place where we've asked the Lord for help. And he's met us with what we need. And sometimes we don't actually think that's what we need. Right? Because help doesn't just look one way. See, all of these people, this is all before Jesus actually resurrected Lazarus. He's meeting them in different places He's helping them in different ways. He comforted them, not just by showing up, but by showing that he was there too. Emotionally, in his heart, he was like, hey, I'm here too. He comforted Martha. He said, don't worry, I'm the resurrection life. I've got this. I'm making, I was like, Lord, do I need to cut things? He's like, just go a little quicker. Um, I, wanted, uh, I wanted to just, I'm going to share, each point I'm going to share about a story where it happens in the Bible, but also personally. For me, recently, as a dad, you get emotionally overwhelmed pretty frequently. Like, especially for me, like sometimes like things overwhelm me. Um, my family has seen a lot, even like when I was younger, if I got overwhelmed, I would like freeze or lash out or whatever it was. And sometimes that still happens. I'm still maturing. I'm still growing. And I'm trying to like, the Lord is still transforming me in that way. Right. And so sometimes like the kids overwhelm me and I'm like, ah, like help Lord, I need help. Like I'm, I'm stuck. I need help. Like I'm about to, I don't want to explode. I, and, um, this is something that I've been having to work on personally. I'm opening up. This is very vulnerable for me. But, like, I, like I don't want to be a person that, that yells at my wife just because I got overwhelmed. I don't want to be a person that lashes out at the kids because they're overwhelming because they've been screaming for an hour. Not bad screaming. Like, it just overwhelmed me. They've been touching me. Like, it's, it's just like, it's a lot. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, help me. And recently, um. I remember it was a couple weeks ago, I was super, super overwhelmed, and I wasn't perfect in it, but I didn't lash out, and I was like, afterwards, I was like, hey, now, we're getting somewhere, and it's because I've been inviting him into that place of help, like, help me, Lord. No, don't just, don't just take away the bad feeling. See, when, we're, so when I was younger, I was, I was the kind of person, it was all about feeling for me, Um Literally until the Lord taught me when I was 18. But before that, it was all about feeling for me. So if I felt something, I would ask him to take it away. We're good. Just leave it there. We don't have the feeling anymore. We can move on, right? And now I've, I've reached a place in my walk with him and in my journey with him that I'm like, hey, I can't just not have the feeling because it's going to happen again. Right? And so I've been having to invite him in and help in different ways. And I want to tell you that uh, the reason I'm saying all that, the reason I'm taking my time here is because it doesn't matter where you're at in this journey. Okay, if you need him just to relieve the pressure, take the feeling away and just say, help me, God. It's okay because I want to tell you I'm living proof that even if you don't have the right mindset, he'll change it. Just keep asking for help. Don't be in this place of, man, I should just stop asking for help because I'm still this way. I don't want to be this way that I am right now. I want to get here because I know that that's what God's calling me and so I just give up. And it's like, no, 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 no. It's okay. Keep asking for help because when you're saying help me, you're inviting grace, which is the empowering presence of Jesus, to then transform you. And that journey sometimes takes a minute. It's okay. It's okay if you just need the feeling taken away. It's okay if you're still having those moments where you're not perfect. It's okay. Just keep asking for help. Don't give up. Don't get stuck. That's what the enemy wants you to do. The enemy is going to come and he's trying to lie and he's trying to weave his way in and he's like, hey, you guys notice that the, the enemy will use, like, obviously we know he uses scripture. We've, we saw that when Jesus was in the desert. But, like, he'll, he'll say things like, you're not feeling it. Yeah. Like, bro, I'm in worship. 
I am worshiping God. You have the audacity to be like, you're not feeling it. It's like, okay, right? So the enemy does that, but he like, he'll weave his way in into our life. He's like, you lashed out again. He, like, pours condemnation on, like, you not doing the good things you're trying to do. It's, it's ridiculous. He's not, just, he's not just, like, sin, 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 sin. No, he's, like, he's trying to put shame on you in every aspect of your life. And he wants you to get stuck. Okay? I want to encourage you. Keep asking for help. Keep inviting the helper in. It doesn't matter if you don't know the answer yet. And... Folks, when you get to a place where the, where the grace has come on you so much that you start to see the maturity point in, in your future, but you don't know what to do, just ask him. Okay? I spent a lot of time on that. I did not expect that. We're going to go to the next one because I got two more and I want to get to this last one. Spiritual help. The doing. Okay? All of us have a co-mission, which is a mission with the Lord. And in that co-mission, sometimes we make mistakes. I will be the first to say, I have made a mistake. Actually, I'm going to start with my personal story in this. Gigi's not in the room, unfortunately. But uh, Isaac and Gigi, Gigi's wife, we went to Africa together on my first mission trip to Africa. Uh, she went, they both went uh, to BSSM with me. And she was with me. And on the first night, we went to the bush bush, which is the boonies of Africa. And when I say the boonies, I don't mean like Texas boonies where there's still a street and, you know, a gas station. I'm talking we're in the jungle. <laughs> and there are people in mud houses. And so on the first night, we set up tent and they're like, hey, everyone, we're going to go to do the, the first half of the Jesus film introduce ourselves, get to know these people. It's relational. Oh, this sounds great, fun. We need two people to stay and watch the tent. The Holy Spirit's like, I need you to do that. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so I raised my hand, and Gigi is the other person that raises her hand, okay? They wanted a guy and a girl. So we're just chilling. It's really boring, so I'm there with the, the Mozambican pastors, and we're making this big pot of spaghetti. I'm talking, when I say big pot, this is the half of it, and the other half is like boom, boom. And I'm like, this is going to be so good. And then they start pouring tuna in, and I'm like, this is going to be so bad. They called it Bush Getty. <laughs> and so we're making up some Bush Getty. We're, spin we're spinning this stuff around. And this lady comes through the, through the gate, and she's like, she grabs one of the Mozambican pastors, and she speaks Makuan. The Mozambican pastors speak Makuan in Portuguese. Gigi's half Brazilian, so she speaks Portuguese and I speak English. And so I'm on this end and she's over there, but we're like right, you know, we're close to each other. But it's going through the four, the four language translation thing here. And so we're all there and she's like, I want prayer because I'm feeling like flames on my arms. So we start to pray. And it's, it, when we start to pray, it instantly changes from flames to she feels like people are stabbing her. And little context when, before we left for Africa, we're still in the States, our, our team leader said, hey, I know that you're all authoritative and you're powerful and you have all these gifts. I'm asking you don't do any spiritual warfare, period. He was like, we've had just too much mess. The Mozambique pastors can definitely handle it. You don't need to cast out demons. You don't need to do that. Let them handle that and you just do the rest. Simple ask. Right or wrong doesn't matter. That's what they asked. I honor that. Okay? So... In the heat of the moment, we all make mistakes, right? I'm like, oh, this is a demon. Get out of here. Guys, you, I've, been in, I've been in deliverance sessions. I've seen some crazy stuff. When I tell you, I, she was short, and when I said that, I looked up, and I could see smiles, like hundreds, and like eyes, and I was like, oh, God, I messed up. And... I physically out loud said, it was like time stopped for me because when it happened, this demon literally started like physically choking Gigi next to me. And the Mozambique pastor's like, whoa, I've seen a lot of things, but what's going on? And I'm, it was like time stopped for me. I'm watching this all and I just go, God, help. <laughs> I had no other words. I didn't know what else to say. I was in a moment of this is about to go really badly. Jesus, help me. 
And so I literally just said, help. And it, I don't know how to describe it, guys. It was like it all got taken care of. Like, she wasn't better. I just want to throw that out there. The lady wasn't better. But Gigi was no longer getting choked out by a demon. And the Mozambican pastor, I look at him and somehow, through my tongue, say, take care of her. I got her. And we walk off, you know. And so Jesus helped. Oh, I have to finish the story. Okay, so the next day, the next day, tragedy strikes. That night, a young man died suddenly. And... So we didn't get to show the Jesus film right away. In fact, we did a wake together. We all gathered around the um, village chief and the elders and his wife and their families, and we're all just sitting there. We sat there for four hours in silence together, just to be together. That's what we did, just to honor their traditions of how they honored the dead. And, like, we went after resurrection and all that stuff. That's a different story, but it didn't happen. And we're sitting there, and it's hot. And I'm like, oh, gosh. And I look over, and next to the village chief is the lady from the night before. And I was like, oh. And they don't call them the village chief. They are the king and the queen of the village. And I was like, oh, the village queen was the lady we prayed for last night. Awesome. Like, it's one thing <laughs> when, like, it's just a person, right? Which I don't hear what I'm not saying. Here I'm saying, like, it already sucked. It sucked more when it was the leader of the people. You know, we got 400 Mo Mozambicans, and she's in charge, and it just went terribly last night. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, help me, Lord. Well, long story short, she got healed, delivered. It was super awesome. And, but all that to say, God helped, okay? In my moment of just literally out loud needing to say, Jesus, help me, he took care of it. All right, um, I was going to do the verse about where the disciples are trying to cast out the demon and Jesus has to come and help them. We're not going to do that. We're going to move on, okay? You guys know that story? We're good? If you want to look it up, it is, which one is it? It is Matthew 17, 14 through uh, 20. Okay? Let's get to the part we need to rest today, which is spiritual help. Not the doing, the being. We're human beings, not doings. So... The majority of our life should be about what's going on in here, not just out here. See, God has us doing things out here, but simultaneously the stuff in here is just as important. Actually, God values you and what's going on inside of you more than what you're doing. So much so that he will turn off your gifting. He'll make you stop doing everything, and it will be like you hit a roadblock, and you're like... I have this roadblock and I don't know what's going on. When God has been screaming at you for months of, deal with your crap. <laughs> Can we just call it what it is? It's crap. <laughs> right? Okay, so. He values your insides, your soul, more than he values what you do. Your co-mission to him because he's eternal and he knows it's already happening. He's not worried about that. He knows it's going to happen. But he also knows that if you get this right, all that stuff will happen. It's the overflow of who you are, not the over. Doing, doing the stuff, as we say, leading people to the Lord, casting out demons, healing the sick, cleansing leopards, all the things. Lepers, not leopards. <laughs> We're, we're, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> we're doing all the stuff, right? That There's not going to be an overflow of, I'm going to get healthy if I'm doing this. Like, no, 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 no. That's backwards. When you are healthy, when you are being transformed, when you are walking in step with the Lord, because his greatest commandment is love God and love others, right? But there's a huge, huge second half of that verse we often don't quote. He's like, as yourself. Love God and love others as yourself. Well, folks, I don't know if you know this, but you can't fully love God if you don't fully love yourself. It got real because we all know what it's like to not love ourselves, 
See, that, that doesn't just mean the overarching of who you are. That, this could be little things. God's not saying the, if you don't have this one thing, like, no, 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 no. He's not always talking about the overarching. Sometimes God puts his finger on stuff. That's what I call it. I call it God's finger on my heart. And it moves around. And he said, when it's time to go after something, he'll put his finger on it and be like, son, we're going to deal with this. The help, the helper, when he puts his finger on something, he's not asking you to figure it out on your own. See, I've talked to so many people that are like, man, I just, I know God's asking me to do this, but I don't know what to do. Ask him. But it says that God will help me. Ask him. Do you want the help or not? It's all about partnership. Everything we do, it, like, if it's a co-mission, not a mission, it's a co-mission, it's all about partnership. He wants to help you, but he doesn't want you just to think it's just, he's not always sovereignly just boom. He does that in our life. It happens, but it's most of the time not that. That's only happened one time in my life, guys. It was for rejection. He sovereignly took that away from me. After 20 years of having it in my life, it wasn't just like he took it away right from the start. No, 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 no. There was partnership in everywhere else, and he just was like, I need to deal with this so we can deal with the other stuff. All of us, it's 1230. No, 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 no. We're, we're here. We did good. I was able to get us to where we need to be. This is not a message to bring you down. This is actually, I want this to be like power going into your heart to know that, hey, when I have something that God is asking me to deal with, that's a key there. I don't have time to go into it fully. Don't deal with stuff if God's not asking you to. It's a mess. Deal with the thing he's asking you to deal with first. Even if you're like, in your eyes, it's bigger. If he's not asking you to deal with it, it doesn't matter. So don't think about what other people are thinking. Don't think about what the pastor's thinking. Don't think about what the church is thinking. Think about what God is asking you to deal with. Okay? So if you, here, I'm just going to use, if, if you have an addiction to nicotine, and you're like, I need to deal with this before I can forgive this person. And God's like, I need you to forgive this person. Guys, I understand that this feels big, or, and these two things can be substituted for anything. I'm using an example. In your eyes, it just looks so massive, like Dad talked about the magnifying glass a couple weeks ago. But God's over here like, deal with this first, please. <laughs> Do that. The helper wants to help, and it takes our partnership our yes, our asking, sometimes all, it, all you need to do is ask. If God says, hey, I want, you, I want you to get rid of hatred in your heart. Okay, that sounds kind of ambiguous, right? Let's look at it from a natural eyes. How do we do that? You don't know. It's okay not to know. There's not, like, you're not going to know the answer. Ask Jesus. Ask him. Each and every one of you have the helper inside. Would you guys stand up? What God did during worship today was very strategic. Because guess what? When all of us were like, freedom! And Anna was talking about the lions roar over things in our life that we're going to deal with, that we're going to take care of, all those things that God brought to your mind. He wasn't just wanting to take away the feeling. He wants to come in right now and he wants to remove the things and he wants to help you do it. And if you don't know what to do, just ask. And so I'm not going to have like a big altar call. Here's what I want us to do. Can we take 30 seconds because we're over time? Would you just, if you had something in your heart come to mind today, and you don't know what to do, you feel great now, but it's still there, just ask him.
for everyone else that might have not got something else during worship, and you know, you're like, oh, I know God's been putting his finger. Just ask him what to do. Finally, if you are like, I know there's stuff God hasn't really shown me yet, just ask him to show you. And then once he shows you, ask him what to do, okay? Let's just take a couple seconds. do we do with this? How do you want to deal with it? Father, I bless each and every person in this room. Lord, I ask that this tool would not just be a good moment of, oh man, I can, I can do that. But Lord, let it be something that goes deep into the hearts of every person here, that this becomes a tool for them to use in their life, in their daily life. Father, if anyone in this room needs help, Lord, we just release the grace to help them in whatever they need. We bless each and every person in here. In Jesus' name, amen. We just thank Timothy for bringing a, a timely word. Fantastic. I'm going to ask the altar team to just come on up this morning. Now, Timothy knows it's hard to finish on time, isn't it? <laughs> That's one of the biggest miracles that can happen. Um, if you need prayer for anything at all, these folks are up here up front just to pray with you. Um, we already gave you lots of announcements. There's stuff in the foyer if you're just looking to get more plugged in. So just take some time in there. Have a blessed, blessed week and a happy Labor Day, you guys.